Hello, and welcome to the Elagica audio presentation. In the next few minutes, we will discuss how viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeast, and parasites affect human health, and what we can do to protect ourselves from them. This entire project was actually inspired by a phone call I received from my wife when she was visiting her parents several thousand miles away. She told me that our eldest son had suddenly come down with a high fever, sore throat, and swollen glands. She asked me what I thought might be going on. I told her he either had a viral or a bacterial infection, most likely strep throat. She asked if there was any treatment she could get at the health food store, as we don't like giving antibiotics in our family except as a last resort. I told her that in my experience, there was nothing that really worked well for either viruses or bacteria that could be found in health food stores. There were plenty of products that increased the strength of the immune response to infection, but nothing that really directly attacked the infections themselves. Well, why not get something that would increase the strength of his immune system, she asked. Our son had a fine immune system, I assured her, and the presence of whatever infection he had was certainly already stimulating a very powerful immune response. Taking herbal extracts to increase the activity of his immune system would do nothing, as it was already on high alert churning out antibodies, natural killer cells, white blood cells, and all the assorted immune agents that were appropriate for whatever infection he had. My wife was puzzled. I explained that all the products you find on the shelves of the health food store for colds and the immune system were beneficial to people with weak immune systems to begin with. What our son needed was something that directly attacked the infection itself, not an immune stimulant. If it were a virus, we would simply have to let it run its course, and if it was a bacteria, she would have to decide on whether or not to give our son antibiotics. Well, our son finally got over the infection, but the experience made me determined to create a broad-spectrum antimicrobial. I wanted something that would work regardless of the type of infection. I wanted to create the proverbial one thing that you would take to the deserted island with you. Specifically, I wanted something that went after the infections directly and didn't just stimulate an already stimulated immune system. How could I make such a product? <laughs> there are literally thousands of different types of bacteria and viruses that make people get sick, and each of them would need to be addressed. I envisioned a mix of hundreds of exotic herbs from around the world, each addressing a different kind of infection. Luckily, the answer was much easier than I thought. It turns out that there is a single ingredient with the ability to directly attack almost every infection known to man, and it's found in the most unlikely of places, the humble raspberry. We'll talk more about what this ingredient is and how it works, but first, let's start with a little biological history lesson. It is currently accepted that man rests firmly at the top of the food chain. Unless we wander into the African jungle to be confronted by a lion, or go swimming in the mid-Atlantic and come face to face with a great white shark, we fear no animal. Even in these cases, we have technology to make us safe. We have guns to shoot lions and steel cages should we wish to get close to a man-eating shark and live to tell the tale. This invulnerability to other life forms is, however, an illusion. There are millions of creatures that have been feeding on us, and often killing us since the dawn of time. I'm speaking, of course, not of large and fearsome beasts with claws and fangs, but the tiniest of God's creatures. I'm talking about viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeasts, and parasites. Throughout human history, we have been at war with these infective microbes. They have colonized us, living in our skin, our lungs, our intestines, and our internal organs. Our bodies have become their homes and their food source. Early man could not attack these tiny creatures the same way he could attack a tiger or a pack of wild dogs. New strategies had to be devised. The discovery of fire 
and the subsequent cooking of our food was our first technological advance and major victory in our war against microbes. Parasites and bacteria were unable to survive the high temperature of our cooking fires, and so we became somewhat protected against parasitic infections of the intestines and bacteria like E. coli. The next advance was the observation that eating certain plants could help the body rid itself of certain infections. This body of knowledge was first learned by watching what plants sick animals would eat to regain their own health, and represents the true origins of modern medicine. The next advance was the domestication of cats. Cats helped us by hunting down the rats and mice that were attracted to the food and garbage of our settlements. In communities where cats were unknown, rat and mouse populations grew unchecked and were impossible to eradicate. The rats and mice themselves were not the problem. Certainly they were a nuisance, but the real danger they represented came from the infections they carried. In 1347, the Black Plague, a disease carried by rats and mice, killed one-third of the population of Europe. Better sanitation, plumbing, and refrigeration were the next major advances in our war against microbes. Piles of garbage in early human settlements attracted swarms of flies and other disease-carrying insects. Instead of human waste and refuse being thrown out of the window onto the streets, indoor plumbing and garbage removal services were instituted. This resulted in a decrease in the number of these disease-carrying insects in and around our homes and places of work. Hot and cold running water made clothes and bedding easier to wash on a more regular basis, minimizing the mites and molds that made our blankets their staging ground for a nightly assault on our skin. Finally, refrigeration, first through the use of river ice, then dry ice, and finally modern refrigeration systems slowed the growth of mold and bacteria on our food. All of these advances moved us forward. The most recent major advance was, of course, the discovery of antibiotics by Alexander Fleming in 1929. By observing that certain molds killed certain bacteria, he was able to discover penicillin. This led to both a deeper understanding of bacteria in general and also to an entire industry dedicated to searching out new and more effective ways to kill bacteria. We've come a long way in our understanding of microbes and our abilities to deal with them. Modern man lives in a mostly disease-free state. Still, the question remains, can we do better? Can we decrease the number of and severity of childhood infections? Can we prevent or shorten the length of the common cold? Can we rid ourselves of the chronic infections that make their homes in us? Can we finally win the war against microbes that was started so long ago?